it is the start of another week in my fourth grade class. Hello, if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Marily Sanchez and I'm a fourth grade teacher in South Florida. This is the start of week 28 and the week right before spring break. Today is March 13th, 2023, and it's also my niece's birthday. So happy birthday to Vanessa. I can't believe you have reached 15 years old. Your tia Mari is so proud of you and I can't wait to squeeze you and hug you soon. So let me go ahead and tell you what we ended up doing today. I'm gonna tell you, boy, was it a hard day this morning because yesterday we did the daylight savings time it started so we lost a whole hour we pushed our clocks forward a whole hour so yeah <laughs> it was kind of hard getting started this morning and i knew it was going to be hard for the students as well so what i did for both of my classes right before we got started with our lessons i gave them a coloring page so that they can start their class period just calm and coloring and listening to some piano guys soundtrack music this is the coloring page that i gave to them i actually found this coloring book of like 100 pages in etsy for like three dollars and some change so i thought i would give this to them so that they could work on it and color it of course they didn't finish so i told them to just take it with them and whenever they have a chance or a break they can just color it and complete it just for fun so then we went ahead with my block one this morning and we read our anchor text which is a drop of water we went through the entire text and stopping at different places to find chronology or chronological order which they were able to find it using the signal words and seeing when things were happening in a certain order so that was wonderful and then they went ahead and started continuing to work on their civil rights argumentative essay I know I've been pushing this essay so long just because I really haven't had time to get to writing we have 30 minutes of writing every day but I've actually been using that time to catch up on reading because we have been so behind like a whole unit behind but now we are where we're supposed to be so we're supposed to be wrapping up this unit that i started last week with them this friday so i am so glad i'll be able to do that and now i feel like okay now we can jump back into writing and dedicate some more time to it so i did end up giving them a couple of different sheets to help them with their body paragraph writing since they had already done the evidence sorting activity which if you don't recall is this right here where i gave them the yellow strip separate and then they had to come up with two topic buckets and organize or sort the evidence into the bucket that it belonged in and each bucket becomes a body paragraph which they then use to complete the inside part of this booklet where they listed the evidence and the topic or the reason for that and the topic sentence at the bottom and then they wrote their body paragraph so body paragraph one body paragraph two and these are the notes i typed them up after we took them but this is just for students that maybe missed a day or two so they knew how to finish their note catcher but today i also gave them this sheet right here which has all those evidence already typed up and titles for the buckets and the topic sentence at the bottom and then on the back i have a sample body paragraph so that they can see what are the different parts of tree that we use in order to make sure we have a full written body paragraph that not only explains our reason to our topic or our claim, but also uses evidence and elaboration and cites the sources for that evidence. So that is where my block one kind of ended off. They're gonna continue working on that paragraph tomorrow. And then my block two in the afternoon, they are a little bit more behind. So I didn't get to writing because I'm trying to catch them up. So what we did is we finished the read aloud and we went into our shared read, but we did review the weekly opener video and the study blast since I had a few students that weren't here and missed that last week. But I ended up creating another little booklet to help them gather their thoughts and information. So this is what I did. This is similar to another booklet that I did at the beginning of the school year, but it has the essential question. We took notes on the video, we took notes on the study blast, and then they did the think alouds or the think alongs as we read the read aloud, stick like a gecko. And as we read the shared read, not only did we do the fine text evidence questions in their books, but they also answered these questions on these little post-it notes 
that are on this little booklet that I created for them. So that's where we ended on this Monday. We have a full school week ahead of ourselves. Tomorrow is pie day. So I already have my printables to go for tomorrow. Because I don't teach math, I still wanted to incorporate pie day in one way or another. So when they come in tomorrow as their smart start, they're going to create a haiku. So I went ahead and created this. It's just a circle template, but up here it describes what Pi Day is. They're gonna write a haiku. Three, one, four syllables for each line, and there's some examples up here so that they can see how they can go ahead and do that. And then they decorate this ring of their circle so that it becomes a little instant bulletin board. This is the Smart Start slide that I have put together for tomorrow when the students come in so they get a little bit of information and know how to get started. I'll also have some examples to show them from previous years when I've had students do this activity. And that's it. That's all that I have to share for Monday. I will see you tomorrow. Hello everyone, welcome to the end of the day Tuesday and it is Pi Day. So celebrate Pi Day wherever you are. <laughs> it's gonna be after Pi Day, but it's always nice to remember Pi Day, especially when we use it to measure the circumference of a circle and then enjoy a nice piece of pie that is usually circular. And even if you're a geek like me, try to find out the circumference of that pie. So anyway, jokes aside. So today actually ended up being a whole entire class period of just working on our pie coups. I thought it was gonna, you know, just be a little bit of a time in the morning, but I really needed to work with the students and really break it down for them so they could come up with ideas on what they could write their poems on and show different examples on the board. So I'm about to show you my board, which looks like super busy, but I did add the things little by little. And for my second class, I just reviewed each item on the board. And yes, I just tripped over this stack of chairs right here. So let me show you the mess of the board. But hey, it helped the students come up with ideas on what to write their haikus on. Again, we are doing it based on a haiku, a Japanese haiku, which is a three line poem about nature using the pattern five syllables in the first line, seven syllables in the second line, five syllables again in the third line. But with a haiku, we're doing three syllables in the first line, one syllable in the second line, four syllables in the third line for 314 or 3.14, which are the first three digits in pi. So let me show you. We started by first creating a bubble map, brainstorming different things that we like about nature. And then I asked the students to choose one of these things and give me a sentence. So that's when I started working down here since someone chose flowers. So then I said, okay, once you choose what you're gonna write about, give me a sentence. So the students said, flowers are beautiful and smell good. So then I said, okay, once we have that, let's go ahead and figure out the syllables that are in each word to help us then fill in those words into the pattern for the haiku. So we decided to go with flower smell. And instead of good, I told them, let's pick a better word for good. So sweet, because somebody said something about perfume and I'm like, oh, it's better if we put sweet because then we can go ahead and put nature's perfume. And notice we had to revise that sentence by not focusing on beautiful, but doing nature's perfume and that follows the pattern. Then I had another student choose another thing in our bubble map that they liked and they said, oceans are peaceful and calm. So then we went ahead and wrote oceans are calm because calm is one syllable, but then we had and, and instead of using peaceful, which only has two syllables, we chose another word, again, revision process, that kind of means peaceful, but has three syllables. So this third line could have its four syllables. So oceans are calm and relaxing. And then we had one more example where the student wanted to write about the orange and red leaves are beautiful in the fall. So we found our syllables. And then we had a problem with finding out what to write about orange and red leaves because we could put orange and red leaves, but then what else could we put that would be three words? So I said, well, let's think about what else in nature, let's think about a simile is similar to orange and red. So someone said, oh, sunset. I'm like, perfect. Sunset like leaves so that we have our simile are beautiful. So that is how I kind of helped the students and I guided them so that they could go ahead and write their haikus. And for my first block, I had time to hang up 
the students work outside in our display board. So I'm gonna give you a quick glimpse of how their haikus came out as they're displayed outside. Hello everyone, I am coming to you from the next day. I had to rush to a faculty meeting yesterday when I filmed that clip and couldn't come back to my classroom to finish filming the rest because I just went home after that because the meeting lasted till 4.30. So let me wrap up what I was talking to you about yesterday and then let you know what happened today. So in the last clip, I showed you some of the paikus that students created that I posted outside. And now I wanna show you the paikus that were created or some of the paikus that were created from my other group, which is my block one. And I also wanted to show you the two examples that I created because I created two examples, one for each class. So this is the first one that I created and I drew a lot of different dragonflies. I was trying different shading techniques on the different dragonflies. And this was my Paiku, Dragonfly Zoom, Swiftly Through Skies. And then for my second group, I ended up doing one with waves. So as you can see, the waves are going all around the circle and it came out super cool. So this one is waves rolling through sparkling oceans. And I try to use a little gel pen that had like silver glitter kind of thing to do like stars for the sky. But I really like how both of these came out. Super, super cute. So that's basically the highlight of yesterday. And then of course I had the faculty meeting and I went home because I had another PD through Zoom online that started at five. So I had to rush home and try to make it on time. I let the instructor know that I was running late. So I was able to get there like 20 minutes after it started, but for today. So today there was a big event at school where students got to kind of almost do like a Build-A-Bear. They came in with money. We advertised it since last week. It was through the PTSA and another vendor that came in and did this activity for the kids was super cool. It's like build a bear, the, like the store in the mall where you choose your stuffed animal without stuffing and then you stuff it and you put a little heart inside, make a wish, all that stuff, and you can buy little outfits for it. So I had different students go ahead and um, create one of those or a few of those because some of them actually, I think one or two got two of them, but a lot of the different students got little stuffed animals and it was great because there were a variety of different stuffed animals for them to choose from and a variety of different outfits for them to choose as well. Basically, once they did that, the presenter or the vendor that was here would help the students by stuffing the stuffed animal and putting their little heart inside and the students then got to take it home. So it was very nice and of course, I had to participate myself. I ended up getting a cat and he was super, super cute and a cute little pig. And I have them here. I'm gonna take them home with me. And I did get cute little outfits for them. So check them out. So here is my wizard cat. I say cat, it looks like a bear, but I don't know, little ears can look like cat ears, right? I don't know, I'm saying he's a cat. And here's my pig. She is so cute. She has little butterfly wings and look at this cute little outfit with the tutu and the roses. Oh yeah, and of course the cat has a little magic wand. Very apropos for me, of course. And it's just super, super cute. They look adorable. And I do have to say, I think it was adorable. I had my block one this morning and a lot of them just started having them sitting down at their desk. And some of them were even like pretending to read books. It was super cute how they just probably them up and I had to take pictures and video clips to show you and to post on class dojo for the parents to see but it was a really nice event but of course because it was um something out of the routine and the schedule it throws off their excitement their behavior and that stuff so did we get through everything in my lesson plans today no um so <laughs> what we did end up doing today is the students got to spin the wheel so here's our wheel it is our reward wheel so students got to spin it let me give it a nice put not out come back come on third time's a charm there we go that's a much better one and i got 
Minecraft education. Nice. So students got to go ahead and give it a turn based on the number of dojo points that they had. And if they had every multiple of 20, they got that amount of to spin. So some of the students had as much as 100 points. So they got to spin five times, but most students got maybe four turns. So because we haven't done it in a while, and they were very excited had to write down all their names and what they rolled and then what i'm going to work on is creating a little like coupon where i can write all of the rewards that they spawn on the wheel and i can check them off and initial it once they go ahead and have one of those rewards so yes that took some time but i'm very excited that they got excited for it so tomorrow tomorrow and friday are going to be very strict very scheduled instructional days so that we can end this week with nice structure and i can wrap up this unit so that we don't have to talk about it after spring break i'm hoping we could do that so i will let you know how it goes i'll see you tomorrow coming to you now from the end of the day on thursday and i just finished dismissing my minecraft club we had a great session all the kids were actively engaged and having a great time talking to their friends, which is what the purpose of the club is for. Collaboration, getting to know people, making friends, and having fun playing Minecraft. So I'm very happy that we ended the day like that. And then we don't start again until after spring break because next week is our spring break, as I mentioned in the past. So today was a day where we were trying to get a whole bunch of different things finished for today. And with my homeroom class, oh, wait, I should start with my block too, because I had them in the morning. They finished their booklet for Wonders Unit 5, Weeks 1 and 2 intro. And then we started them on a flow map kind of little booklet that I just, I didn't want to create one on the computer. So I just gave them a white sheet of paper, had them folded, and we started working on that. With my afternoon group, they went ahead and wrote their answer to the reading response question for the shared read why are electron microscopes useful and then they went ahead and did the entire flow map little paper that i had started with my block two this morning so let me show you so this is the booklet that block one and two finished today so they went ahead and finished all their questions now for my block two which i had this morning this is what i had them create and basically had them draw a big drop of water and write the title inside of the drop of water write down what the unit is and of course write down our spade we haven't finished so we'll finish that tomorrow and then on the inside we started by writing or creating the flow map showing chronological order in this particular section in the text and they'll create two more flow maps in their little booklet so actually my block one which i had in this afternoon since they were a little ahead they actually finished the entire little booklet here so again see how we completed the spade sections for that and then we did the flow map number one flow map number two and on the back flow map number three showing different steps in order love 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 thinking maps and this is one that helps students visually see the sequence of events very good for chronological order so like i mentioned my block one which i had this afternoon had to write their reading response to the question on that shared read uh wor your world up close and i had them help me create a bubble map on the board to help us see the different ways that the text tells us that electron microscopes are useful so we went page by page and this is what the students shared similar to the one that we created with my block two the other day so we had electron microscopes in the center and then the students started giving me all the details that the text tell us that explain what makes them useful then of course we went from this thinking map into writing and they answered the reading response question for that so here is that question and the sample response that the students were able to see afterwards and I do teach them to restate the question, answer it, prove it, and that's wrapping our answer. And of course, this type of answer gives a whole paragraph and it really reinforces the writing skills since we start with a topic sentence and then support it with elaboration and evidence from the text and then end it with a closing sentence. So that, my friends, is what we ended up doing today. Tomorrow with my block one, since they start with me tomorrow, we're gonna read the shared read, or sorry, the paired read which is a fiction story, The Incredible Shrinking Potion. 
So this one, the characters get shrunk and they can see the world in a different way. So that we're going to compare it to the anchor text and then they'll start taking their wonders assessment. And then for my afternoon group, which will be my block two, they'll finish their little paper on a drop of water and then do the same thing, read that text because they had already answered the respond to reading question that I showed you. So that way they can also get started on their wonders assessment. So hopefully I can wrap up this unit tomorrow. And then when we come back from spring break, we start on a brand new unit. That is all I have to share for today. I'll see you tomorrow, which will be the very last day before spring break. Hello everyone. It is now the end of the day on Friday and it is 517. I have stayed later than I expected today, even though the principal let us leave when the students were dismissed because some of us didn't have planning today because we had a lot of teachers out being the last day before spring break. I was one of those teachers that lost their planning, but we are just trying to do things so that it is a lot easier to come back after spring break. So today, just to give you a recap, my students in my block one, we read the paired selection and which was the incredible shrinking potion. We talked about the figurative language that was used, imagery, the idioms, the similes, and then we compared it to the anchor text and the, pair, the shared read, which was your world up close and the anchor text was a drop of water. So after that, the students started their wonders assessment. I had a couple students finish, some of them didn't finish. So when we come back on on Monday after spring break, I will give them some time to make sure that they finish that assessment. With my block two students, we didn't quite get to the assessment. We finish our flow map for the chronological order for a drop of water, which they had started yesterday, so we finished it today. And then we started reading The Incredible Shrinking Potion, and I did have them draw their favorite part of that particular story. I didn't get to finish that story with them because I was called to a meeting with a parent, and they were just working on that, and then we had some type of break at the end of the day because it's been a long day for a lot of us. My students were split up, during the day because my co-teacher wasn't here because she wasn't feeling well so while they were broken up or split up i should say they were working on their women's project and they're finishing their assessment if they were in the afternoon that was my block one for my block twos when they were split up in the morning they were working on that project and another packet that i gave them along with finishing their i ready minutes so that was what we ended up doing i went ahead and finished all my lesson plans for next week so my lesson plans are typed right here and found right by my desk. And I did split them based on what block one and block two was doing since they're both in a little bit different place. And I also added my lesson plans to my Google Keep ready to go for when I come back. Another thing that I decided to do today so that it's ready to go when I come back on Monday morning was not only change the date so that it's set for March 27th, but I also put on the student's desk a quick write activity so that they can either write about something related to the spring season or something related to something they did during spring break. They could draw a picture first and then they can write. This is the paper right here with the directions. This is where they'll draw their picture and this is when they can start writing. If they need more space, I did give them some more lines on the back and I told them to be ready to share so I can give them some sharing time on that Monday and let me know how they spent their spring break. So as you can see across the room, I put the papers on all the students' desks ready to go. And I've also changed the date for the 27 here, here, and here. And I know that my future self will thank me for leaving everything nice and ready to go so that it is a better transition from having a week off once we come back on the 27th. So with that, my friends, that is all that I have to share for this week, week 28. Out of the school year, when we come back, it'll be week 29. We'll have two more weeks to end the third grading period, which another thing that I did right now before I'm getting ready to leave right now is update my grade book, put those notes in or those grades in, I should say. And yeah, that way it, I come back relaxed, ready to go. Everything is good to go and we can have a nice week back from break. So if you enjoyed coming along with me, don't forget to hit the like button, leave a comment down below, let me know what you thought or any questions you may have. If you made it to the end of this video, go ahead and leave a flower emoji to represent spring break, since the first day of spring is next week, Monday the 20th of March. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed coming along with me. I hope you have a beautiful magical day and don't forget to smile.
Hello dreamers, wishers, and magical thinkers. Thank you so much for making it to the very end of this video and for showing your support. If you'd like to subscribe, you can do so by clicking on my picture down here. You can also check out my latest videos here and here. Don't forget to believe in the magic that's inside you because you are capable of great things. See you next time.